So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we've got a great guest. This is my third guest from the awesome show, Snowpiercer. It's Ian Collins. Ian, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hello to everyone around the world. Uh, we've got listeners and viewers, mainly, believe it or not, in Canada and the US, uh, even though I'm UK-based, which is uh, quite astonishing. It really is. So hello to all the US and Canadian listeners and viewers. So um, we're going to talk about your wonderful career and we're going to talk about the wonderful show that is Snowpiercer that is dominating Netflix here in the U U UK already, even after one episode. But before we do, I always like to check in with my guests because the last two years have been a challenging time, to say the least. So how have you kept positive and kept moving forwards during these pandem pandemic times? Yeah, I mean, it has been a tough time. Um, communities helped me. And that's really what I think is important. I had a community before the pandemic. And that's really got me through the last two years. So I think it's mm. crucial to have that. Be kind. Trust the scientists. I mean, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to try to guess what's going on. <laughs> But uh, trust the scientist, believe in your community, send positive vibes, and be kind. Mm, I think that's what it's all about. And, and I've got to say, during this pandemic time, it really has shown all the nice people out there and all the horrible people. I think you've seen that massive divide between the people that obviously care about each other and respect each other and the ones that, unfortunately, you know, get sucked in by false information by this propaganda that's on the internet regarding you know vaccines and, every, and everything like that myself I've been vaccinated three times now but I've had covid twice <laughs> which um oh. you know I'm I'm out the other end I'm fine I'm still here I'm alive and that's thankful to the vaccines um without them I'm sure it would have been a different kettle of fish as they say um but let's uh, discover a bit about you Ian so where are you originally from? Yeah, so I grew up in Toronto, um, actually Scarborough, Ontario, which is a little bit outside of Toronto. But uh, I consider myself a Torontonian and uh, then moved out to Vancouver about, I think I'm 10 years now. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And what was it like growing up in Toronto? Because obviously that's on the East Coast. So I presume the weather is completely different than what it's like in Vancouver. Oh. <laughs> uh, disastrous is what comes to mind when I think of the weather <laughs> in Toronto. Um, if you've never been, it can reach below 30. Um, horrible, horrible Januarys and Februarys. And I just booked something and I have to fly out that way. So I'm looking for my winter jacket right now. I'm like, oh, where did I put it? Because <laughs> in Vancouver, <laughs> it's beautiful. It oh, never reaches below four. Wow. Have you ever been to the UK? Because the UK has got this, the the most messed up weather in the world. It's never really ever hot. It's never really too cold. It's just miserable all the time. So you go to any other country, <laughs> they've got their set se seasons. When, where, when it's winter, it snows. When it's summer, it's sunny. In the UK, literally, you've got to go out with a coat, an umbrella, Pair, pair of shorts <laughs> you know what i mean you've got to be prepared prepared for yeah. everything um it's, so it's very from your, vancouver weather yeah well the thing is i've never been to the west coast of the u.s or canada i've never been to canada actually and i'd love to go um but I've, I've i've done a lot of the east coast so i've done a lot of the east coast of the states uh you know like pennsylvania and 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 um you know, been up to Amish country and places like like, like yeah. that, which is beautiful. Really, really is beautiful. Um, but yeah, so on your bio, uh, it says that you had a unique upbringing. Um, please say you were brought up by wolves um, or, you know, something <laughs> yes. like that. No. <laughs> um, which bio was that? Well, um, it may have been a bio that was sent to me by um, your publicist. A um, unique hey, hey, upbringing. Yeah, yeah, to be honest, you know, um, it could be unique. Yeah, I think the uniqueness is like being part of two 
different racially backgrounds. I mean, my father is Guyanese and first generation Canadian, and then my mom's Scottish. So it's, I was brought up very differently. Yeah. <laughs> kind of in between worlds. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And 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 Scottish. So obviously the weather in Scotland is terrible as well. So uh I suppose you've probably <laughs> learned from your mum. Your mum's pro- probably said, you know, when it's cold, ah, this is all right weather. It's fine. It could be worse. Um, <laughs> yeah, it could be worse. It could be worse. Um so does your mum have a full blown Scottish accent then? No, she doesn't. It's been gone for I mean, she moved to Canada very young. Okay, okay. So, yeah. so you're lucky on that 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 way because Scottish pe- people, when they get angry, you can't understand a word they say. So even as Brits have <laughs> have a problem with Scottish people. So at a young age, what inspired you to be an actor? Because it's probably one of the most difficult jobs and the most yeah you know anxious filled jobs to have. I mean, what made you decide to be an actor? You know, I, it's tough. I've always had such an amazing, developed imagination. I've always been a kid who's been somewhat of a loner and uh, didn't have much friends because I was weird. And uh, But I think the acting bug hit me around grade one when I realized that uh, the Power Rangers weren't real. <laughs> I remember my parents telling me that uh, they're actors and did you want to meet the actors? And uh, I think that's when it clicked. I was like, I want to be a Power Ranger. And that hasn't stopped. <laughs> so I think that's where it, it, it kind of stems from. That's like the core of my acting. Um, but then high school, I really fell in love with theater. And uh, yeah, so it just kept growing from there. Mm. I think I think actors, I mean, I did performing arts as well. And um you know, I've got to say, when you said that that when you was younger, you know, you was weird or you didn't fit in. Um, you know, did you find that when you, um, you know, become, you know, started the the acting and 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 at school, did you find that you had a group of friends that all of a sudden you all clicked and and they they were performers as well and you just thought actually I'm not weird or I don't fit in that well. I'm actually with the same people. Do you know, I don't know how I'm saying yeah, this. this is where I belong. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you've got your own like You know, tribe. the best part about yeah. acting is being able to create with like-minded individuals. You know, it goes back to community, but it, yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. Weird mm. finds weird. Exactly, exactly. And obviously, you mentioned the Power Rangers, but you know when you were you you wanted to take the profession ser- seriously, who inspired you within the industry? Who really made you want to, you know, become that actor? Yeah, uh, I was a. I, I I still watch '90s movies, so Tom Hanks comes to mind. Um, you know, uh, Denzel Washington and Will Smith were huge idols of mine. Uh, Meryl Streep and The Death Becomes Her, like that kind <sighs> of. That is an awesome. That movie. kind of humor and that kind of like craft work even just the lighting on that movie (laughs) (laughs) the 90s had it the 90s had it Uh, Mm. but you know inspired i took a break from acting after high school and i decided to be a chef Mm. so i went through all of that i i got my red seal which is like a qualification to become a chef and uh worked in like five-star establishments for quite a few years. And then uh, at 20, 21, I, I kind of made this like decision that I needed to find what was missing. And I fell back into acting, you know, started doing commercials. And I was like, oh, this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is totally what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I just have the mindset. I have the I, every time I think of not doing it, I can't. I can't think mm. of anything else. And, you know, after commercials, when it, going into the principal work, and it's all just, it's all kind of fallen into place like it's supposed to. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, my passion came, started early, but then came late. So, yeah, yeah. 
Sorry, I, I ramble. <laughs> Rambling while I'm no, reminiscing. No, that is fine. Do you know what? I'm just I'm just admiring the halo behind your head right now. Because I oh, don't yeah. know if you realise your head was positioned there and it just looks cool. It's like you've got a halo. It's like you've been sent down from above. Um, so how hard is acting, you know, in, in Vancouver? How hard is the profession? I think a lot of Canadian actors move to Vancouver because it is Northern Hollywood. Uh, but again, the community is different out here. It's very welcoming. It's very, um, there's enough for everybody. Uh, and I don't remember that in Toronto. Uh, but mm. uh, it's, it's a tough industry all around. There's steps that you have to do. And there's, it's still an old school mentality. You know, it's, it's tough for Canadian actors in general to break because you have to eventually go down to the States and you have to start doing that every year. And that's that costs money. So mm. even if you're if you're a recurring guest star, recurring on a show, you still have to pay to go down there and do the whole trying to get your tax credit. And it's it, it's there's other stuff outside of acting. Mm. You know, acting itself is hard, but then you have to like have the business down. Mm. And that's something I've been learning the last five years, and it's the business is important just as important as the art um which comes naturally to most people if you if you've studied and you've you've done your work the art part comes easy it's the business that throws off our actor minds but again mm -hmm. community if you have that community you have somebody who's going to be able to tell you and teach you how to do it mm. I mean, it's funny you say about obviously going down to the states because, you know, I've had quite a few, quite pro probably eight eighty percent of my guests are Can Canadian on the show, and the majority of them have said that it's very difficult because a lot of these shows that you you know are even made in Vancouver, they normally cast the principal cast as from America, and like the Can Canadians don't get sort of sort of a look in, which I'm really shocked at to be fair. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough practice. It's an old school mentality. Um, you know, the, the, especially in Vancouver, there there's pretty there's about 20 people that get seen for those larger parts for the recurrings and the leads. Um, but yeah, a large majority of that is cast out of LA still. Mm. So, you know, if you're a Vancouver talent, it's only a 2-hour flight to get down to LA. So most people, after they get like the 30 credit uh, mark, they try to find management down south. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's, I, I, I just find it very bizarre because, you know, we talk about like snow, snow piss and you've got quite a few Brits that are, are yeah. in that show. But yeah, you know, the talent pool in Canada must be enormous. I mean, you look at actors that have come from Canada, like Michael J. Fox, Kiefer Sutherland, uh, you know, these are actors that are house household names, so it's just frustrating to hear that there is that sort of politics that is still going on. So acting obviously is one of the hardest professions, and it comes with a lot of ups and downs. How do you deal with you know going for the audition and 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 getting rejections and the ups and downs of the profession? When I started, I, I saw it as competition, but I, I don't anymore. It's, uh, there's room for everybody. There really is. I remember a teacher saying that to me years ago and I was like, oh, no, I want that part. <laughs> but uh, there's room for everybody. So the audition process, well, it's changed now since the pandemic. So it's, it's mostly self tapes, uh, which <laughs> I actually appreciate and love because you can, as an actor, you can have a life now. You know, mm -hmm. the audition season doesn't really take a toll on you as much as it used to. Like, I have to be here. I have to be there. I have to get over there. Now you just get the four auditions and you can tape it on your own <laughs> pace. Um, but it does come back to community. It, um, you need it. Mm, definitely. So the audition and what's process being... for me, it's, it's 
it's changed a lot in the two years. Uh, but even before that, I was going through a process of not taking it so personally. If, if you do the work and you come in with your process and you don't, you don't feel like you could have done something different or you mm. don't feel like, oh, that was mine, but I messed it up. Um, cause you can't control that. You can't control what the writer wanted, what the producer, want, what's the, what the network wanted. So it's, it's out of your hands. A lot of that stuff. Yeah. Mm, mm. And, and, you know, there's actors out there that go for many auditions, but I'm a great believer in, you know, there is a plan in place for everyone and it only takes that one audition and that one part yeah. to literally break you, uh, into, you know, better things which i think is awesome i mean what's been your biggest challenge uh you know so far within your career you know every year it kind of changes that's a great question <laughs> uh last year i think it was patience um patience is a tough thing still for me uh you got to be patient in this industry but still stay ready it's mm. it's a tough duality of it um but yeah the toughest thing I, yeah i think it is patience you know i think we I, when you're working you you just want more and more and more mm. but there's a patience aspect of it so you know when i'm when i'm on a roll and i'm booking and i'm doing i'm doing what i love i always am like pushing my team i'm like When's the next one? When's when's my next job? What's the next audition? But patience is such an important part. <laughs> you gotta you gotta just be. Some you gotta take those moments and just be like, everything's yeah. okay. I can just like stay here. <laughs> I can just sit. <laughs> um, so that's been a hard part because I, I always want to be moving because I feel like when I'm not moving, I'm not progressing. But patience patience for me yeah definitely definitely and and of ov obviously you're doing very well for yourself at the moment and and uh, you know it's awesome the stuff that you've been in i mean going forwards in you know a few years time have you got a dream actor or actress or, or director to work with that you would love you know if you had the chance yeah i've been asked this a lot lately uh <sighs> It's always going to go to Meryl. <laughs> like, it's, it's yeah. just, I want to work with Meryl. Um, uh, Will Smith as well, I think, would be awesome to work with. Um, somebody local, I mean, Adrian Holmes is an amazing actor. Adrian, yeah, there, every, there's, there's so many. My list goes on and on mm. and on. Um, I remember when I booked Hit the Road, uh, which is Jason Alexander's pilot a couple of years ago. I was ecstatic because I, that was an idol of mine for so long. And to work with him, I was like, oh. So I, <laughs> I think the reaction happens when I book something. And then I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a fan at the core. So it could be anybody. <laughs> I'll, I'll geek out over anybody. I'm like, oh my god! I know what they are. I know what show they're on. I've been watching them forever. So it's mm -hmm. that's the core of me is like a nerd of television, comics, movies. So it's you could name anybody. You could say Ian Collins, and I'd be like, oh my god, I saw him in that. <laughs> you know? But Meryl Streep, I I I just yeah. think she's just fantastic. I mean, don't don't look up that a lot of the critics that's, said was awful. That's why she's I so thought fresh it was brilliant. in my mind. Uh, and that she, that was just an incredible film. You know what? Yeah. My wife loved that film so much. And I said, why? And she said, because the end, ending's realistic. <laughs> and oh. I was like, oh, dear. <laughs> but I oh. won't spoil it to, for anyone that hasn't watched it. But it's great. And Meryl Streep play, playing the president. I just think she's absolutely superb. So, so what's your end goal, Ian? What is your end goal in this career? Is it Oscars? Is it... You know, being a household name, you know, what is your end goal? 
you know, I've never really had an end goal. I've, I've never said I want to be famous. I've never said I want to be a household name. Uh, you know, my end goal is happiness at the end of the day. So if that happiness rolls into being a household name and that allows me to work and do things that I love to do, mm. then that's part of that happiness. But my end goal is happiness. The second I'm not happy, that's when I'll move on to something else. <laughs> I think it's, back uh, to the kitchen. You have to have, <laughs> yeah, back to the kitchen. Yeah, uh, but you have to have the passion in this industry. You have to be happy. Mm. Mm, definitely. I also want to talk about this because uh, you're also part of, and I've got to, got to get this right because it's a two S L G B T Q I A plus community. Um, yeah. You know, this community is getting, get, getting bigger, which is awesome. Me personally, I want to start a happiness community or a happy community because I don't think there is room at all for, for, for any stigma against anyone identifying whatever they want to be as long as they're happy. You know, my girls, Absolutely. they're four and eight. Um, you know, would I be mad if she came home and said that, you know, she was gay, she wanted to be a unicorn? I wouldn't care as long as she's happy and I'll support whatever my girls want to do. What what does it mean to you being part of this commu commu community? And, and, you know, what's a community like where you are? Yeah, um, great question. Um, I think we live in a time where we can, this is the best time ever to be who you are. So, you know, if it is being a unicorn, then be a unicorn. Uh, you know, don't hide yourself. Don't shrink yourself for anybody. And I think that's what's really important. You know, the community I have out here is fantastic, but I know that's not the rest of the world. Mm. But that's changing day by day. And I think, you know, like you said, there's a lot of parents in your age category that think the same way mm. you know we're all, we're, the world's changing this is the best time to be who you are mm. so any advice i can give to any young babies in this community just be who you are mm, especially if you're in acting they'll be able to read it when i started mm. acting it was tough because i thought oh if i if i came out i'm that's gonna cut half of the roles maybe even 90% of the roles that I would do. But I'm, that's, you know, fortunately, we live in a time now where that's just not true. So, mm. and it reads on the camera. Just be yourself. You have to, you have to really think and dive deep because you're, you, you, you owe it to yourself. Mm. And the world is complicated enough as it is. So, yeah. you know, we just need, need, need to be true and, and I mean, I've I've unfortunately been been on first first hand where quite a few of my friends have been attacked because, you know, of being gay, and and I I I just think it's mad madness. I really do. So yeah. I think for all the parents out there, it's our chance to ed educate our kids to change that for the next generation because it's definitely changing generation on generation. Um, you know, even my dad is 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 as has changed from when I knew him when it when I was young, when I was at college, you know, with all my friends. Um, he is definitely changed. So that's the way forwards. We need to educate. So let's Absolutely. talk about let let's talk about Snowpiercer because Yay. this show is awesome. Congratulations. Um, you know, I've got to say, um, this is definitely the show at the moment in our house that we're dying to see every week and we've had episode one and wow yep. season three episode one it doesn't pull any punches i mean it's straight off the bat action you're on the edge of your seat you don't know what's coming next so it's fantastic <laughs> you've appeared in all three seasons so far so uh, yep. when you got the role role originally how was it presented to you and did you go and see the film that it's based on before doing the audition? Yeah, so the first time I saw the film was actually the year prior 
to the audition because they were auditioning for a show called Snowpiercer. There was an original pilot before this pilot. So there was actually a, a completely different script show, showrunner. Um, and that was the first time I watched the movie on Netflix and I fell in love with it. I was like, yes, this is awesome. Um, <laughs> but no, then the following year, um, I auditioned for Tristan and it was a standard audition. There was, it was a six page audition, if I remember correctly. And, uh, they presented him as like uh, a junior hospitality worker um, underneath the person in charge. Um, So yeah, I came in, did the audition and then got a call back the following week and then got to meet the director and Graham, our showrunner um, and had an audition for them. And then as I was leaving that room, I got the role. (laughs) <laughs> uh, wow it was it was the character was a little bit different but i've always played tristan as somebody who's like fiercely intelligent and like with that intelligence he creates these um massive amounts of anxiety and fear but it, i've also played it like maybe he's maybe that's his defense mechanism and he's just trying to make people believe that he's meek Mm. so it's that's something that i've always kept for him it's been Mm. working i think (laughs) (laughs) and it's a great character and in the last two seasons you've had some amazing moments on screen especially um making that announcement and ruth is just not very pleased (laughs) with you at all um so so what can we expect from tristan in season three without you know, giving an, an, away any spoilers. I wish I could give away everything. I'm so bad at these interviews sometimes because I'm a fan. <laughs> so I've read every script about four times now. And uh, this season is insane. It's insane. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you, you were talking about twists and turns. This it, The season finale, I was speechless. Wow. Uh, that's all I'm saying about that. But I think we can expect, um, you know, maybe Tristan coming out of the shadow a little bit. So Good. I'm excited for that. Yeah, there's going to mm. be a lot that happens this season. And uh, we see you a lot with Ruth, which is Alison Wright. Uh, what was it like being on screen with her? Because her character on the show is just marvelous. But as a person, oh, yeah. I mean, what is she like to work with? Well, I mean, you see my face? <laughs> I smile <laughs> when you say your name. Um, you know, because we've all worked together for four years, it's family now. Mm. Uh, it feels like home when we all come to the studio. Uh, but getting the privilege to work with Allison the last four years have been amazing. Mm. Um, she's incredibly knowledgeable. And with that knowledge, she, she's, she shares, she's kind, she's humble, she, she's a great person. Yeah. I That's couldn't awesome. imagine the last four years working with anybody else. <laughs> so it's, uh, <laughs> I'm fortunate, very fortunate. I mean, the show's look is quite unique in the way that the sets are just fantastic. I mean, what is it like actually filming on those sets? And are they as small as we we sort of feel that they are watching it. So the studios themselves are massive. The studios are massive. You can get lost. They have, they have an AD directing us to how to get to which sound studio and which one is this one. And <laughs> it, it's huge. Uh, but the carts themselves purposefully, they wanted it narrow, um, to have that feel. Um, so it's, amazing to be on because it definitely you definitely get into it right away you, there's no like forcing it or pretending um that you're on a train because you, once you're on it you're on it like and then there's these seesaws that they're moving the train so the the train's actually oh. moving while you're acting um and that helps a lot um so the sets are just phenomenal it's one of my first gigs that 
I've done this much studio work and it's been a pleasure to be a part of. And it's also spoiled me at the same time because I know I'm not going to get to every set and be like, so we're supposed to be on a train. <laughs> Where's the actual train? Uh, <laughs> so I think, uh, yeah, it's, I've been very fortunate to be on this show. It's uh, the, the studio is amazing. The set deck's amazing. It's even the special effects. Even, you know, I have a special effects scene this season coming up. And it was all there. I didn't have to, I didn't have to fake any of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spoiler alert. I mean, I've got to oh, say, oh. you know, the the writing is 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 fantastic. And, you know, I've got to say with this show, there's only a few shows out there that when you watch a show, you feel that there's no small characters. Like literally everyone stands out as equal. And and that's what I love about this show. Um, and I love the characters like yours and Kevin's and, and who uh, I've had on the show as well, good old Tom L Lipinski. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> he, he actually told me after the interview, um, I, in I interviewed him when he had the scene with the bath with Sean Bean and yep. um, where he died. And then he told me afterwards he wasn't dead. <laughs> and I, I had to keep it secret. And I was gutted. I didn't even tell the wife, literally. I was waiting for his return and for a, for a, for a face, and it was just fantastic. I mean, what's been your favourite scene to shoot so far? Uh, would that be season three or? I you know, got a I got to shot. I, I'm not supposed to say this. Um, a few things didn't make it to picture in season two because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, but I shot a scene um, with Mr. Bean. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't make it. But it was it was a fun one. It would have been really super fun. And I'm glad it didn't make it, because something else would have happened if that made it. Uh, but <laughs> I I, there's no point even talking about it. it and what's it. It and what's thing. and what's Sean like? Because he comes across as quite a menacing character, you know, on screen as Wilford. I mean, I've yeah, I've heard reports writer. that he's very nice. Yeah. Um, you know, he. he is he a nice, nice guy in person? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, simple answer. Yes. Um, you can tell, you can understand why he's had such a fruitful career because mm. I think there is a element of you have to be a kind of person to make it in this uh, industry. So I think, uh, yeah, he, he's very humble, very quiet though. I was, mm. I was surprised uh but very very humble very very kind well they say as brits are quite quiet anyway do you know do you know what i mean we don't sing <laughs> from 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 the roof so and he's at, in, he's actually from uh about a 20 minute drive from where 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 i am now so that really that's his home yeah so if i shout loud enough he, he might not hear <laughs> but um <laughs> you know <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll stalk him some other time um so on the show <laughs> have you kept anything have you kept any costume pieces have you kept any mementos that you borrowed i've kept tristan's glasses from season from the wrap of season three uh because they've been the same for three seasons so they found a copy because they were starting to get a little scuffy um, so I kept Tristan's glasses, um, and that's about it so far. Yeah. Oh, what, what? Do you know what I, know. I would because be everything's taking custom stuff made. right, left, and center. Everything's really custom made, so it's it's it would be really hard to uh, take anything because then you know that you would have to get tailored again for the following season. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah so i'm looking forward to season three the rest of it um do we know if there's going to be a season four is that something yes. still under wraps yeah yep. no that's that was that was uh announced in december yeah was it i've missed it i missed that yeah. oh wow because i know that when season one was just about to be released it got season two renewed straight away without right away. even coming out. Yeah. So it just shows how, you know, well received this film, uh, this series must have been with the, you know, the showrunners and 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 the studio studios. Um. So what's next for you? So obviously we've got season three. Um. 
are you now working on season four or is it a case of you've you've got your feet up being patient and uh waiting patience. for the next big thing yeah <laughs> patience uh i'm actually flying <coughs> to toronto next week to uh uh, shoot a new show which i'm really excited about uh unfortunately can't talk too much about it but the show's called belated um it's the script's amazing so excited to get started work on that and uh yeah hopefully i get the call for season four <laughs> fingers crossed fingers crossed oh yeah. no you you say you're saying that now through through my head now i'm thinking oh no tristan's not gonna make it uh but uh i i i'm sure i'm sure um yeah i'm sure you will fingers crossed because it's a great character and i'd love to see him shine more in season three and actually you know because you can tell that he's he's obviously you know seeing the light now you know with wilford and yeah it's the same like ruth was you know of, you know it's difficult for her to go against everything that she's you know been following for so many years and it's the same i suppose for Tris tristan you know i get a feeling that he's realized actually you know this ain't right and things need to change so so it would be nice to see him uh, in a great action scene <laughs> you know yeah. coming out going, ah. I want so Tristan i cannot the freedom wait fighter <laughs> yes yes straight 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 up front and center um so um fans wise um how can fans follow you on social media yes yeah, so you can follow me on instagram uh, at fresh underscore collins and on twitter at collins underscore ic mm. any plans to do cameo because everyone's doing cameo at the moment yeah everybody is doing cameo uh no no plans I think I would love to start doing the convention scene. So once COVID starts, you know, dwindling out, we can we can almost see the light. I would love to start doing some conventions. So and that's if, how I think I've done with the fans a little more. Have you done a convention yet? Or would that be your Only first as one? a fan. Only as yeah, a fan. I've gone yes, to you fan go to conventions. conventions. Awesome. Yeah, I love them. awesome. I mean I mean <laughs> thing is it's nice to for the fans to connect and you know you 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 get some great experiences some some actors like them and some don't uh so it's nice and refreshing to hear that obviously you want to go and connect with fans and it's a great environment oh, to yeah. be in it really is and with the pandemic you know it's nice that in the UK all the restrictions have been lift, lifted so everything's go, going ahead now so it would be nice awesome. to get back to the convention scene this year. Yeah. Go and meet some lovely people and take take, take some wonderful video and photos. But uh, Ian, you've been Absolutely. a great guest. It's been lovely to talk to oh, you. Thank you. I cannot wait to watch the rest of Snowpiercer um, because <laughs> it's just awesome. It really, really is. It's one of the best shows on Netflix. And um, I can't wait for season four as well. That's great news, which I missed. But uh, keep <laughs> safe. Look after yourself, sir and uh you as well continue on being super and and continuing doing an awesome job in the shows that you're doing thank you so much i really appreciate that thanks for having me on